getting ready to go live. I'm actually live on Facebook already, but we're about to be live on Speaker. Coming in. Coming in. User joined your channel. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ask for Candy, 101 Ways to Make Your Love Life Sweeter. As you can hear this week, I have a studio audience. <laughs> I had a couple friends come and join me because who doesn't need a little bit of an amen corner? So hopefully they'll join in a little bit and you know answer some questions, interact. It's Scott and Vanessa. They don't want to be on camera yet, though. They're a little bit incognito, and we're okay with that right now, right? <laughs> But we want to say hello to everybody listening in on Armed Radio. If you're listening on your TuneIn app, on your smart device, if you're listening in the garden, we love listening in the garden because it's all about love on Armed Radio Global. Or maybe you're joining me live on Facebook. I see Joe. I see Angela. I see Diane. I see Michael. Hello, everybody coming in the room. I love it. Or if you want to, you can call and you can talk to me and you can ask questions. The number is 1-800-508-5431. Call me up. You're going to want to interact because this show, I feel like this is going to be a crazy show. I have so much for you today. And today I'm talking to the men's this, honey. So we have a lot of conversation. Also, during the show, if you're just burning, 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 but you're shy, you can email me at ask for candy podcast at gmail.com. I see Steven just came in, Vanessa just came in, ah, Vanessa's in the room and she just came in the Facebook live room. It's like magical technology. Anyway, welcome everybody. For those of you who are, who are listening out in the radio world who may not necessarily know who I am, I am Candace Harper, love coach, and I teach and inspire audacious intimacy for powerful people. So I always say dating and relationships are hard, but love, love is easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about love today. And in particular, we are going to talk about men who want amazing, high quality, loving relationships, but don't know how to create them with the women that they desire. And, you know, I know I'm, I'm not naive. I know that like men are much easier, much, much less, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cause I don't want to marginalize anybody and I don't want to generalize, but let's face it. Like when, when men want something, they just, they go after it. If they don't want it, they might play with it for a little while and then put it down, or they might ignore it altogether. Whereas women, we think about things, we analyze things, we, you know, we're different in our desires for relationships. But what I want to do today is talk to men about, you know, men who really want to create something high quality about how they can do that. Those of you who don't and don't care about it and are sleeping with whoever you want to and doing whatever you want, do your thing. This show may not be for you. But those of you who actually do want something really special or do want to learn how to create something really special with a woman, this show is all about you know, everything that you need in order to do that. So let me first say this, because let me get this out of the way, because I get this all too often. How in the world am I a love coach and I'm single? Oh my gosh, I'm such a hypocrite. No ring on this finger. It's okay. You know why? Because here's the thing. I don't believe in like all the, all the one size fits all tips and tricks. I don't believe that anybody knows for you, what you should do with love. And what I do as a love coach, what I know how to do and what I have expertise in is tapping into your inner intuition and tapping into your inner guru so that you can figure out your love life. I'm not here to tell you all the rules and all the steps and all the exact things that you should do because nobody can know that for you. And like I say, you know, if, you're, if you are in a couple right now, you're just a death uh, infidelity, a change of heart away from becoming single. So we could be at any stage of life at any time. And it's not about knowing all the answers. It's about knowing how to tap into your own intuition, understand yourself, understand what you need, understand what you like, and work that out. So that's what I do. That's why I, I can call myself a love coach, because I know how to help people do that. I know how to inspire that in other people. But I got to be honest with you. In as much as I get a lot of private mail from straight men asking me how to be better in their relationships with women, and I do interact and advise and coach and help and support, and I feel very comfortable doing that, I've never really done it in a public forum. So there's a part of me that's like a little bit nervous about giving men advice about how to have relationships with women because I also think they're going to feel like, oh, you know, typical woman, she's just telling us how we're supposed to do it. 
She thinks she knows everything. She thinks she knows all the rules, all that stuff. But I like, I really don't want to come off that way. What I really want to communicate is that it's about loving you into your awareness. And if you've been struggling, if love is what you want, if creating something with a high quality woman is what you want, I am a high quality woman. So in as much as I like have sort of resisted coming out in this way and actually, you know, speaking from this voice, thinking that, you know, I had my own story that maybe I would come off like too much of a know-it-all, I don't know, but who else to better tell you what would work for a high quality woman than a high quality woman, honey? Oh, yeah. Right? Thank you, Scott. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm here to tell you what I'm, I'm here to tell you. So today's show, let me just give you a little bit of breakdown of what's going to happen. We're first going to talk about the definition of a high quality woman for this conversation. Because obviously we all have our personal preferences when it comes to who we like. So um, we're going to break that down. And then what I'm going to give you are the questions that any high quality man can answer. Now, here's the thing. I don't want anybody to feel shamed if you can't answer the questions. What it is is the openness to answer these questions about yourself. So if, if I'm a high quality man, I can uh, when I give you these questions, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can answer them or I can put in the thought process or they will start me down a journey of a thought, thought process that I'll be able to answer them. If I'm not a high quality man, I'm not in touch with these things too much. So I'm going to give that to you and it's going to be something you can chew on for a little while. And then I'm going to, as usual, give you the three ways to make, make our love life sweeter, right? I always give you guys three things that you can do this week, three things that you can start, three things you can start exploring just to make love life a little bit sweeter, love and life, you know, whatever you need to do. And then we'll say goodnight because there's so much. There's like so much that we have to cover. We have a studio audience. We have friends on who else came in. Denise came. Hey, Denise. We have people who are listening in. We have people that are listening in on the radio. And we have people who may call. Let me uncover my phone, make sure that that's all available. So I just want to make sure that we fit everything in. So I guess we should get started. What do you guys think? Should we get started? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So the first thing we're going to start with is the definition of a high quality woman. Now, this is the definition for the purposes of this conversation. Now, I believe in these things. I believe that these are um, basic universal human um, traits that make life work. That I didn't include things like uh, money and education and, and uh, beauty and things like that because I feel like that's all very subjective and it's all very personal. So you know, what you can do is add those things secondarily on top of these things and decide what kind of woman would be a high quality woman for you. But for our conversation, a high quality woman is not going to chase you, but she will let you in. Number one, she'll relate to the man she sees you as. So a high quality woman is going to relate to you as powerful, relate to you as someone who can do great things. And unless you consistently prove otherwise and, and you know, kind of don't end up doing very great things, then she's going to continually expect you to sort of break through your blocks and be bigger than even you think you are. A high quality woman has stopped or never even started letting men wreak havoc in her life. So, you know, a lot of us have been there. I myself have been there. There was a time when I did not know I was a high quality woman. And sometimes we high quality women go through that. But what makes us even more high quality is that we recognize it. We learn our lessons, we keep it moving, and we stop letting it happen. And then some of us, we're fortunate enough to grow up and understand that you never let it happen. And for those of you out there, go ahead, girls. I'm proud of you. She also learns from her mistakes, and she can walk away when she realizes she's done. Hardships and challenges to grow her so that she can continue to create what she wants. That's what high quality women do. She thinks abundantly. There's always a solution, enough resources, and always enough people who are going to love her enough that she doesn't have to manipulate, force, or control anyone to feel certain. She's down for the ride, but she doesn't co-sign with foolishness. She's not going to support your addictions or fund your 10 hour a day video game habit. A high quality woman wants a man she can learn from, admire, and respect. She cares for herself way more than she cares about making you care for her. She's not ashamed of her relationship status or her romantic history. She's able to be vulnerable and tell you the truth about both her strengths and her weaknesses. And the ultimate, she will admire your strengths and forgive your weaknesses if you're willing to be authentic and open and honest with her. 
So that's our definition. That's what we're working with. Now, you know, hopefully you guys on Facebook Live might chime in. And if anybody wants to call in and add to that, my studio audience, Scott and Vanessa, do you have anything you want to add to what you might think it might be a high quality yeah. woman? Huh? <laughs> my mother. Your mother was a high your mother was a high quality woman. See, that's good. And it's good to meet a man who has that kind of relationship that he recognizes his mother as a high quality woman. What about you, V? You have any like traits you think? Well, I think my father's a high quality man. Oh well that's if we're, good. If we're, if we're, if we're, <laughs> we're going with that high quality parents. Really I, I have a very high quality father. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So he's gonna already have asked these questions that are coming up of himself if he's a high quality man. And I I've met him. I know that he is. He's a good guy. <laughs> So now here's the thing. Okay, so let's see how to ha how to attract and have a relationship with a high quality woman. So as you guys know, a lot of times what I do is I just basically read you excerpts from my book that's coming out. Um, and I keep saying it's coming. I promise it's coming out. Like I know I say that a lot, it's but it's it's on its way. It's shy. It's shy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's coming. I promise. Okay, so. Just so you guys know, I'm not looking to change anybody's mind. So I know with men, it's like you do what you do when you're ready to do it, right? You know what you want when you when you want it. A uh, man, when he's ready to be in a relationship, he he knows it. And you know, most of the time they say that they're not because that's not how men, you know, have culturally been groomed. It's like they don't walk around. It's not like we, you know, women were raised to dream about our weddings and dream about our future relationships and you know be relationship minded. And you know, men aren't necessarily groomed that way, generally speaking. So I'm not here to try to change anybody's mind or try to convince anybody to get ready for a relationship. If you are already a man out there who wants to have a relationship, then this is for you. So um, if you're frustrated and you're struggling, I believe that most half decent looking guys with a little confidence and some spare cash can attract women and even fool them into being on whatever terms he chooses, right? But if what you want is an actual partner who can truly be a friend and support you, make you want to be a better man, accept all your weaknesses, and admire all of your strengths, or just be beautiful to you inside and out and raise your children, the ones that you have with her, or love the ones you may already have, here's the challenge that you have these days, my loves, is that most high quality women are really over like the get a man to be happy narrative. Most high quality women, if you talk to them, if they're single, they will tell you they do not need a man. They may want one, but most of them are like, you know what? I got it financially. I'm surviving. I'm taking care of myself. I know I'm going to be all right. It's not like generations before us where, you know, women actually didn't survive without having a man and that, you know, we needed somebody to put a roof over our head or needed somebody to put food on the table. It's just not like that anymore. So, Here's the problem. I mean, we still have to connect, right? We still want love. We're still human beings, but those um, external sort of forces that kind of used to push us together, they're not really there anymore. And, you know, the biggest mistake that we all make is that we look for someone who um, is going to contribute to us. Like we build up our lives and we build up our survival, however we're doing that. And then we try to look for someone who has this list of things that we want. Or we look for someone who's going to you know, fulfill whatever it is we've decided that we want. When in fact, the idea is to look for someone to contribute to. It's to get ourselves to a point of such self-value and self-love and you know radical self-acceptance that we're ready to overflow into someone else and pour into someone else. And um, here's the thing, if you want to be able to connect with a high quality woman and truly have something invaluable and rare, you have to offer her something that she would be hard pressed to find anywhere else. And the only way to do that is to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can be. Now, I know that sounds so Oprah, and I know that men don't ne necessarily go in for that sort of, sort of talk, that sort of language, but, you know, it just, it, that's what it is. It's about how do I absolutely be 100% myself? How do I get so you know radically self-loved and self-accepted? And for men, I think the path to that is a little bit different than it is for women. And the path that I usually take for, with coaching women into being able to be in that space with themselves. So here are some questions that I believe a relationship-minded man who wants a quality woman could be asking himself to start himself down the path, down the trajectory of having a deep understanding of himself 
and ability to be authentic and open up to let someone else in his life and um, you know, take all the steps to attract and invite that person that's gonna work. Now, what I want you guys to do is to really ingest these questions. We're gonna take our time through them. We have the time. I've sort of like pathed path this out so that we can really dive deep into it. And I want you guys to answer. And whether you're a man or not, you can answer. Um, and whether you, you are ready for a relationship or not, if this triggers anything in you and it triggers anything in your mind, please, please definitely talk to me or call. Like I said, the number is 1-800-508. Wait, let me make sure I'm giving you the right number. 1-800-508-5431. I've only said that a hundred times and you'd think I'd memorize it, but you know, I have a smartphone, so I don't memorize numbers anymore. All right. So let's do this. We're going to start with the questions. Question number one, have I developed an unbreakable relationship with my word? So that's what you want to ask yourself, right? Am I a man of my word? So simply if I say I'm going to do something, do I make sure to follow through? If I can't do it, do I communicate? Do I do something in its place or create another solution? Am I a man whose words, actions, and beliefs are in sync? Am I the type of man that when I say something, people respect it? Because if I am, then even when I tell a woman something she doesn't want to hear, she'll, she'll respect it. She will respect it. Like if I'm somebody who, when I say something, it happens, or um, when I say something, I mean it. I don't say things meaning something else then when I feel a certain way, even if a woman doesn't agree with me, even if I'm breaking up with her, she can't help but respect it. So that's the question to be thinking about. That's the, that's the first question to be thinking about. I don't know how you, what comes up for you guys or what it makes you guys think about, or V, v who's part of our studio audience has raised her hand. What do you think about V? What comes up for you? Talk, well, I, you have to speak I, loudly. I, I completely agree that, that <laughs> a high quality man keeps his word. Yes. But so many of them think they keep their word, but they don't. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great question. Now, here's the thing. For, for the people on the radio, if you didn't hear V, she said so many men think that they keep their word, but they don't. And I think that that's true of people. I just know, hey, Brad. Brad just joined us. I think that's true of people in general, because I honestly think that that can be a blind spot. Like, mm. You know, I think I've, I've talked about this before. I I'm, used to be one of those people who'd always be like, you know, oh, I'm never late. I'm never late. But I was always late. Like I was always like 15, 20 minutes late to everything. And it's something that it took really getting an awareness about it and paying attention and having a, a, an impact happen. I had to have somebody be like, okay, well, you're not getting the job. You're, you were 30 minutes late. I had to have someone actually, I had to have an impact for me to notice, well, well well, wait a second, I had to get angry about it. You know, something had to like trigger something in me. And I think that a lot of us, we walk around in life and, you know, both men and women, we walk around in life and nothing's triggering, triggering that anger. Nothing's triggering that, that we're not, you know, we're falling out of our word. And a lot of times too, what people will do is they will fall out of their word. And if you call them on it, they will somehow victimize themselves and, and get angry with you. So I yeah. think- Integrity is one of those very difficult things that when we're not in awareness of it, we may think we have it, but until someone else is willing or something happens that impacts us in a way that we can't change or is out of our control, you know, there's no, there's no magical wake up to it, you know? And for me, what it really was, was understanding that me being out of my word has an impact. That's a big one. Understanding that being out of your word has an impact. It, you know, it changes how people have to behave. It changes how they, you know, run their people. It just how you know, respect you or not. And it also speaks to our value, like our self-value. Like people who think that they can be out of their word and it's okay and it should be cool and nobody should say anything, usually don't understand how valuable they are to the situation. Like when you're missing people notice that you're missing and whether it's that they're expecting you for a meeting or an interview or, you know, expecting you for a date or expecting you, you know, just for a social occasion. I used to be one of those people who would always back out of parties and like events and things like that. Like I would always be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming. And then at the last minute I would like call in fat or something. I couldn't find an outfit to wear, <laughs> you know, like there'd be some reason why, like, Oh no, I'm not going to make it. I'm not feeling so good. 
and you know, at the last minute or not say anything or something like that. And always just ignoring that there was an impact that my value was going to be missed. You know, and when we teach women's workshops, when women do that and, and then don't show up for the group and we have a whole group going on, mm -hmm. you know, we have to understand that it, that it does have an impact. And that's why I think in particular, going back to our, our topic at hand, when it comes to men and um, relationships and being in their word, the reason that they sometimes struggle with that is that they don't necessarily understand their value or they don't really care what the situation is. And um, they haven't made that connection between what what we create when we aren't in integrity, mm. you know, which is not much, which is not great. It's usually someone's anger or annoyance. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. when, when you encounter somebody constantly who, who who doesn't keep their word, then you get worried. Yes. If you have to do stuff with them, you get anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. So, you know, it usually, and I, and I do think the onus is on people, like when you love someone and they're continually out of their word, the onus is on you to let them know there's an impact. That's why I talk about vulnerability and actually saying what's real for you. Like if you really feel like, you know, that this doesn't work, this is not good. You not showing up or you being late or you saying you're going to do something and then not, it's, it's like when you think about children and their parents, I think it's hardest on kids. Like when yeah. they have parents who don't keep their word, you know, when there's no communication that there's an impact, that person has no way of knowing that their value is missed. Mm. You know, so each one teach one, honey, right? <laughs> it takes a village. <laughs> it takes a village. So that's number one. Number two, the second question that a high quality man who really wants a high quality woman who really wants a relationship should be asking himself is, do I have a sense of personal responsibility? So if you're willing to ask yourself this question, you probably already, you probably do, you probably have it, but how have you applied it to your interactions with women? A man who takes responsibility for his actions is not quick to call a woman crazy. And yes, women are also um, responsible for their own behavior and their own actions. But a man who wants a good love life with a high quality woman owns his participation in the good outcomes and the bad ones. Like if he does something and he gets the negative reaction, he usually wants to make it right. So a man or a boy who's, who is not that emotionally advanced will always blame the woman when things go wrong, even if they're you know the one who somehow we're the catalyst to whatever it is. So it, it's just a journey to go on. Like, do I have a sense of personal responsibility? Do I get that I am responsible for what I'm experiencing? Especially if you're someone who has had, you know, I've actually <laughs> dated someone who all of his other girlfriends, he described as crazy. And any indication of any sort of like negative behavior for me was crazy. And it's like, how is it that everyone you've been with, <laughs> Including myself, are crazy, right? Right? <laughs> Hello. Like, what is the constant? What is the consistent? And I always mistrust guys who kind of like lump all women in one, you know, in one thing. This whole like all women are this, all women are that. And you know, I try to be very careful with it myself. All men are this, all men are that. It's like if that's what you've been experiencing, and and you actually can put a voice to all women are this. You are not taking any responsibility for, for the fact that you are the consistent constant. You are the thing that is, you know, creating whatever you've been experiencing with all women. Dr. X. <laughs> right? <laughs> and whether it's just your perception that, that you've been creating it with a belief or whatever it is, it's like you're, you're the constant. Okay. Does anybody have any, like, studio audience, what do you guys think? Do you have anything you want to add to that? Um... Mm -hmm. No. You're good? You're good? <laughs> Scott, you're good? I'm good? You're good? What about my, my Facebook Live people? I see Brad. I see Askia joined. I see Ez joined. Hey, Ez. Jeff George. Rory. Hi, honey. Anyway, if anybody wants to say anything about that, about accepting responsibility. See, here's the, here's the thing about this stuff, which I love about transformation, but it also is like, you never know like how it's landing on people. But I do know this, when people are thinking about what you're saying, they get real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and especially if they're thinking like, oh, is she talking about me? <laughs> they get real, real quiet. So I'm okay with the quiet. 
I just want to make sure that you guys, you know, if you if you want an opportunity to kind of chime in or, you know, have some sort of uh, input in what you think about these questions or what might even be coming up for you. But let's just keep it moving. You know, we got we got tons of more questions. So the next one, I think that a high quality man will ask himself if he wants to have a relationship with a high quality woman is, am I resourceful and unstoppable? Like, do I tend to give up when things aren't just handed to me? So I think a high quality man asks that, that question of himself because, you know, we all have challenges in, in life. We all have the little hurdles and things like that that we have to get over. And when it comes to relationships, like I said, dating and relationships are hard. Love is easy. But, you know, the, the little hurdles are, you know, kind of figuring out and navigating through your dating and relationships. So, you know, a man who wants to have a relationship with a high quality woman is going to be resourceful and unstoppable. I mean, he's going to stop at nothing to, you know, like we're saying, keep his word to um, take personal responsibility, to get things done, to be in a solutions-oriented space. Um, yeah, and it's not even a question. Like, guys who aren't that serious-minded, it's like it takes nothing for them to, like, you know, on to the next or, you know, I don't want this anymore. Let me just, this is too hard. Let me just do something easier. And sometimes that's the space we're in. And it's not right or wrong. It's just, it's the difference. So, you know, like I said, if you are someone who wants to have a, a meaningful relationship with a high quality woman, you want to be somebody who is resourceful and unstoppable. You're solutions oriented. You know how to get things done. You know, you know, you know the end goal and, and you know how to make that happen. And if you don't know, you figure it out. You're willing to go through the steps. You're willing to um, deal with the challenges and make things, make things what you want them to be. I, I have something. Oh, tell us, B. What Say do you have? something that came up. Okay, B, right. got something that so, came up. So, so many times I hear, you know, I, I, I'm married, so I, I, I don't have this problem anymore. But so, so many times I hear my girlfriends saying, everything was going so well, and then one day he just broke up with me. Mm, that happens. What what is that all about, Miss Candace? What is that <laughs> all about? Well, here's the thing that I think about that. I mean, obviously, I don't think there's one coverall no. rule for that. But one thing I think that a lot of us do not do, um, or that we don't make a practice of in the beginning, is get in get on the same page as far as our understanding of what we're about, like what we want. Not necessarily that we have to be like, oh, we know this is gonna be a long-term commitment because we don't always know that. But it's really important to like be willing to have that vulnerable early on conversation about this is what I want from myself. And you may or may not be connected to that. I don't know you well enough to know that whether you are, but both people have to be willing to do that. And a lot of times what happens is instead of having that conversation, instead of being in the, oh, wait, someone's calling in, hold on. <laughs> Hello? Hi, who's this? I was trying to do an intimate DM. Could you explain how to do that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were trying to do an intimate DM? Yeah. All right, I'll explain that later on at the end of the show. Who is Who is this? Who's calling? It's Joe. Hi Joe. <laughs> All right, Joe. I'm in the middle I'm in the middle of giving like good principles, Joe, and you called in and interrupted. It's okay. <laughs> Bye Joe. That was Joe. We love Joe. Joe ca called in and interrupted my dream. Oh, so what we were talking about is why guys ghost what seems like a yeah, good relationship. Yeah. So a lot of times I think a guy will enter into a situation and he has his own agenda. Like whether it's that you're a, a distraction and he wants to have fun for a little while or he just wants to have sex or he might, there might be part of him that's like, oh, I'm on board for a relationship. But then there's something about the person that, that they're like, mm, but she's not it. And the thing about guys, it's like guys date like they're shopping for fruit. And that's why I try to coach women to do that more often, too. It's like squish, squish, mm, not right. And then on to the next squish, squish, mm, not right. That's how they date. If they want it, they'll keep it. If they don't. So, so how do you have this win. conversation? How do you have this conversation with a man? Or how does a man make this clear to a woman? Okay. So, 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 so it doesn't come up that... Oh my God, he was here and now he's gone. Yeah, I get that. Here's the thing about this conversation. You can't, I mean, here, 
<laughs> All right. We're not going to go into like the moral realm of why men should tell the truth. And it's very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> <laughs> why men have such a We'll be here for a while <laughs> because men definitely struggle with the truth, especially in the beginning and especially if they enter into something not knowing, you know, what or if they know what their agenda is. But if they don't know what their agenda is, like they want to say all the right things. So, you know, they, even a good guy might just inadvertently, you know, give mistruths about what he's up to. But what I always coach with women, what's really important is to just always be in integrity with what you say you want. So if you're a woman and you start dating a guy and you really like him, but you've communicated that, you know, you want a relationship, that's, you know, the direction that you want it to go in and you stay in integrity with that and nothing else, like you don't settle for anything else. If he's not above board and he's not really that into you and that's not what he wants, he's going to opt himself out. Like he's going to jump out and disappear. It, it's just the way it's the law of it, you know, yeah. it's, it's like the law of attraction. If we stay in integrity with what we say we want, which a lot of us, what we do instead is we'll be like, oh yeah, I only want a relationship. But then all of a sudden we're just like, we let them come in and out when they want to not really be that involved and still be available. We still date them, even though they're kind of like maybe lukewarm sometimes and kind of, you know what I mean? Like letting it string along or even if we're having a good time and then they just disappear, it's like, you know, we get into the state of like, what's wrong with me? And we turn it into like, you know, it's something that I did or, or whatever, which is hard not to go into that internal conversation. But I always say every rejection is a favor. I know that's like, you know, such a trite transform transformational thing, but it's really true. Like when we are aligned with what we want, those who are not there to serve it, they, they can't stay. They won't. So anybody who walks away from you, even if it feels like it's like ice cream every day, if they walk away from you, you may not know what that reason is. You may not know why, but it's it's the best possible thing that they could do. Do, do you think do you think dating today, like in this day and age, is is tough? Um, that's a great question. Vanessa just asked me, do I think dating in this day and age is tough? I think that it's all in your, your beliefs and your perception. I think that for anything to be challenging, and I even think it's true with marriage too. I believe it's what, you, what our perception of tough is. And I think what our perception of tough is, is usually has to do with what we think we are entitled to, to have and what our map of love looks like. And if we decide that it's supposed to look a certain way and then things end up not looking that way, then that is tough as hell. <laughs> like if you think <laughs> that your dating life is supposed to be wine and roses and you're a princess and everybody you meet is gonna love you and you know be honest with you and be on the same page and be on the same trajectory, if that's, you know, obviously we're, we're not that nice but if that's what what your mind map says about what your love life is supposed to be and that's not what happens then that yes that is tough but when we're willing to just kind of like be present in the moment um enjoy where we're at and be with where we're at and be like self-accepted okay with who we are not shaming where we're at not shaming ourselves because we're not perfect not shaming that person because they're not fitting in our list not in that story of like wrong, 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 wrong. There's no reason why any of it should be tough. Mm. Especially for women. Like I come buy me some dinner. I don't care if we end up married or not. Like let's just have a good time. You know, and I think the same is true for marriage. Like obviously, especially with marriage, there's additional challenges because now you've committed your life to someone. But it's like how much of it are you so committed to it having to be this certain perfect way that you're standing in the way of actually being being able to enjoy what's real. And be present to what's real and what you can discover and how your relationship can grow. But yeah, thank you for that question, Vanessa. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> So I see some more people join. We got Russell, we got Tommy, my Tommy, I love him. Um, everybody's so quiet on the Facebook. Usually you guys like make a little commentary and things like that, but I feel like this means that you're listening. Maybe you're getting some information that's working for you. I don't know. All right, now here's another big, big question. And we're, I can't believe it's already like, we're already 40 minutes into this. Oh my God. Ah, we still got so much to do. So here's another big question that a high value man who wants a high quality woman is asking himself. Do I know my purpose? Ooh. 
I, do I know who I am and why I'm here? And like, you know, what the hell? A lot of people think that their purpose is, is like the tools we use. Like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm writing or I'm, you know, I'm a painter or, um, you know, the things that we do that we love. The, that's not your purpose. Those are your tools. Like, what is, you, what is your contribution to society? Like, why are you here? And it's not some great grand message that you you get from on high. It's like my decision. Like, who am I? And I was talking about purpose last week when we were talking about audacious intimacy and, um, you know, how to create intimacy and being able to share your purpose. Like I always say, like, my purpose is to uh, love myself and teach others how to learn to love themselves and radical self-acceptance so that we can all create win-win relationships and connect connect like humans are supposed to, right? That's my purpose. So I use this podcast. I use, you know, the book that I'm writing that's coming out. I use my blog. I use, you know, my, my group, the Creative Love Collective. Um, sometimes I use my artwork and my painting and creativity or, you know, whatever, however I can get the message out. Those are my passions. Those are the things I love. But my purpose is to teach radical self-acceptance to teach love, to teach audacious intimacy. That is the print that I'm going to leave on the world and I'm gonna use different medium to do it. So that's the idea is that being connected to that and not just connected to it, but accepting of it and willing to allow yourself to be a vessel of it and you know, being connected and grounded in the earth in that way, that is a, a I wouldn't say it's a surefire because we don't know when we're gonna meet that person who is that special person for us or who is a special person for us. But being so connected to that is such a great way to weed out the ones that are not. Because it's just like with integrity and being in integrity with your word. When you know your purpose, uh, people who are not aligned with it, you don't attract them. And if you do, it's for a very short period of time. They're there just to either grow you or challenge you or whatever, but they can't they can't stick around if they're not aligned with what you're trying to create in the world. If they don't know how to support that in a, a contributive way, if they don't know how to be there for it um, in, a, in a either standing out of the way of it or helping to push it along. So if you are a man who wants a high value woman, a high value woman knows her purpose. She knows her why. She knows why she's on this earth. She understands how she can use her talents and her passions and her challenges to make that print on the world. And she, she's not gonna waste time with someone who doesn't, who's just like searching for his spine in the weeds and doesn't know what he's doing with himself. Like there's just no, there's no compatibility there. So what do you guys think about purpose, B? B has a, I love that B is here to participate. And I love my studio audience. Give yourselves a round of applause, studio audience. Woo, Scott she, B. Go okay. ahead, B. If, have you ever met somebody who you really wanted to have a relationship that didn't agree with your purpose? Absolutely. Absolutely. How does that affect you? I, you know, I, I feel like yeah. that... That I'm, affects me sometimes when when I when I just meet some like obviously I'm mar I'm married and my my husband is just like do whatever you want all the time he, <laughs> he knows at this point he totally knows at this point supportive and um but I do meet people who are like yeah no no you shouldn't be doing that or yeah. you should be doing this or you should really do this is this is where I see your talent like and I and I want to say how do you know yeah but how do you deal with that. Okay, so that's a great question. Vanessa in our studio audience just asked, how do you deal with when you meet somebody who doesn't align with your purpose? And especially if it's somebody that you actually love or fall for. And I actually have been in that situation myself, honey. So I not only was I in that situation, but I didn't really dis like truly, truly discover my purpose until two years into it. So here I was in a relationship with somebody who I definitely loved, but was so out of alignment with what I was trying to create. So out of alignment with what I see for my future. Just, you know, we just were not. The only thing that you can do in these situations, because you can't just switch, you know, switch feelings on and off. It's not like, oh, you're not, you know, on, on board with my purpose. I got to go. I just, you say, yeah. But I always say you never have to cut anybody off. All you have to do is get a, get in alignment and get an integrity with what's important to you. If you are that, they, they find themselves not, there's no room for them anymore. And you don't have to control it or manipulate it. You just get really focused on who you are and why you're here, because that 
is your connection to source. And you know, whether you believe in God or what do you believe, whether you believe in just humanity, that is your connection to humanity that transcends any love relationship. Like who we are as our part of this big amoeba of humanity transcends who we are with individually, right? So if someone is not on board with what you want to contribute to the world, um, just like with integrity, they just, there's no room for them. And slowly, as you get more and more aligned with what you're doing and you stop resisting what you choose for yourself, they will find themselves not no longer appropriate for what you're doing. It's just, and that's what happened with my relationship. You know, it did, yeah, sure, we had some struggles, we had some fights, there was still some resistance, I was still kind of engaging with him. It still, you know, went back and forth for a while. There were still a couple more years of struggling back and forth, but more and more and more, I was more connected to my purpose and wanting to live in that and do that and be that and be inspired by that, the less I wanted to spend time with him. <laughs> you know, and I didn't have to do any major things, it just naturally, I wasn't as available as I was anymore. And naturally, you know, even though he, he might still want to try to make time, it's like he gets that there's not really a place for him anymore. And it sounds so like, ooh, like heartbreaking, but you know, it, it's something that naturally happens on its own. And I think the reason that we resist heartbreak and we resist breaking up and all of that stuff so much is because we always feel like we have to control every moment of it. Like we have to make sure we don't hurt someone too much or make sure we don't get hurt too much. You don't, you never have to do any of that stuff. All you have to do is just really get authentic and aligned with who you want to be in this world. And those who are on board for it show up. And those who are not, huh? What was it? Show. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> and those who are not on board with it, they they go about their merry way. And they figure it out someplace else maybe. Or maybe they never figure it out. But, you know, that's not for us to, to control or decide. Mm. Yeah. All right. We're moving along. Oh, we only got 15 minutes left. left so I want to, like... And I definitely want to get to the last question, but okay, here's the next one. Have I worked out my demons? A high quality man who wants a high quality woman is going to ask himself that question. So a man who hasn't worked out, you know, like a resentment that he has or an overdependence that he has on his mother, like all women he meets are going to show up as a representative of her in some way. And he's going to filter the way he looks at women through the opinion he has of his mother. So if you've not worked out your demons, you're not you know, and you have some demon and some, you know, issue with your mom, you are not going to recognize a high quality woman because you're going to be looking at her, at every woman through some sort of filter and casting aspersions on her. And, you know, it just, it doesn't work. And if you have that issues that you haven't worked out and those kind of demons, you're just going to be repeating behaviors. Like if you had a dad that abandoned you, you're going to be an emotional abandoner or a physical abandoner or whatever. Like you're going to be somebody who ghosts, who walks out, who orbits, who does all of that stuff and that's a high quality woman is not gonna stick around for that very long she's you know she might you might get her in there for a little bit but after a while she's gonna be like eh, you know he's a no show so um have i worked out my my demons uh what else let's see <laughs> what consistently shows up in my life like we were talking about earlier you know the people who date the same person over and over again so when we consistently experience the same negative outcomes but with different people, it's time to look at a constant. We, we talked about this earlier. Um, how about this? Do I end up meeting dating women who tend to be victims? If the answer is yes, am I an abuser or a victimizer? You know, like the problem, with, if I'm a controlling and abusive man, I'm going to attract women who are victims. And victims will stay and stop at nothing to survive while, while staying captive. So, you know... There's that. Am I addicted to something? You can be present. You can't be present when you're high, and you can't heal anything that you have to be high or drunk to deal with, unless you get sober enough to deal with it. So you know, these are the kinds of things. And like I said, I'm not here to shame anybody. I'm not here to make you wrong. If any of these things ring true for you, it's like if they're ringing true and you want a relationship with a high quality woman, it's time to take a look at these things, to ask these questions of yourself. And sometimes they can be hard questions that nobody wants to look at. Like, you know, why do I stay drunk all the time? Cause I don't want to be asking myself these questions, but do I want to stay drunk or do I want a relationship with a high quality woman? It's my choice, my choice, my outcome. Um, am I actually available for a high quality woman? Am I uh, comfortable and confident enough with myself that I could be supportive? To a woman who is purposeful, am I emotionally and logistically free of commitments to any other women? <laughs> that's one that's like, 
Mm. You know, sometimes you guys, you try to be real tricky with that. You know, like, oh, I'm still living with my ex-girlfriend, you know, whatever. And I've been there because I actually was in a relationship for over a decade. And in the last couple of years, we were still living together and, you know, starting our dating lives. But you're still living with your ex. You got stuff to work out. You got stuff you got to do. <laughs> and it may not be emotional feelings. It may just be logistical stuff. But, you know, like we're talking about availability, availability for a high quality woman. Um, and do I want to be in a relationship? You know, a lot of guys, they don't, you ask them that question, they'll say no. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you are not in the space where you want to be in a relationship, you're not available. And you can't expect that a high quality woman would be interested in you. So, you know, that works out fine. Do I know how to communicate honestly? Um, am I afraid to tell the truth? Some men are so afraid of female anger. I don't know what that's about. Like it's, I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's a mom thing or what. The studio audience, look, they're like, we don't know what it's about either. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is that about? Like, you're bigger than us. Um, <laughs> you know, like always trying to say the right thing to keep the peace, whatever. Like, you know, not at, like guys who break up over text, things like that. Like, you know, do I know how to communicate honestly, face to face, um, you know, say exactly. And that goes back to integrity and keeping, keeping your word. And here's the big one. Well, it's not the big one, but it's a big one because if you want a high value quality woman, <sighs> sex is so important, right, studio audience? Yes! yes, it's very important. It's very important to a relationship. So ask yourself, do I use porn as a guide for how to have sex? <laughs> because if you <laughs> want to be a high value man who wants a high quality woman, uh, you have to be willing to get into a space of such vulnerability when it comes to sex and being able to be present and in a moment and um, learning what she likes and uh, interacting and connecting in a way that pornography cannot teach you. I am an advocate of porn on some levels. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an advocate of some porn, but I'm an advocate of other porn. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to be voyeuristic. I think, you know, we're curious because we're human. We love watching each other, whatever. And whatever floats your boat, as long as everybody's legal. But here's the thing. If you're using it as a guide for your techniques and you feel like you've developed techniques because you've watched porn and you're using porn techniques and that's what you do and that's all you do, then you don't know how to connect sexually with a high value woman you just don't and unless you're willing to like open up and listen and actually interact and be present and learn and um you know learn what each other, each other likes and actually get really personal with it and connected and authentic you know whatever a high value woman is not going to be interested you you just there's not enough dick to swing if all it does <laughs> <laughs> is pornographic things look i made a rhyme right? <laughs> so we made it. We made it through the questions. And if you guys have any other questions or any other sort of things that you think of, you got to email me at askforcandypodcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah, like I, my Facebook live is so, so quiet. <laughs> like normally I get, you know, a little bit of comments, a little bit of interaction, but you guys are like, you know, whatever you joined in. Hopefully you got some stuff out of it. I don't know, you guys out there in the, on tune in or in the garden, I hope that you are getting a lot of value out of this uh, particular topic. And I hope that, you know, something is resonating and, and working for you. But how do you guys, in the studio audience, how do you guys feel about the questions for a high value man that he should ask himself? Do you, oh. do you agree? Scott? <laughs> I, know where to start. Yeah. <laughs> I think well no what i think is interesting is i think it resonates either male or female yes i actually do and i think you can draw a lot of parallels with that yes um obviously sitting here as a guy not as a woman i think just not necessarily in terms of gender roles but the lines are very what's the word i'm looking for Blur. yes yes and i think yeah you know it's it's a tricky one. There's no right or wrong answer for anybody. Yeah. You know, I'm seeing her as a single person myself. But um, 
Yeah, it's, it's thought-provoking, very thought-provoking. Oh, good. Good, I'm glad. And that's the idea. That's what we're here to do. We're here to provoke thought. We're here to get us in a conversation about it, right? And I totally agree with you, Scott. I absolutely think it, it applies to both men and women as human beings. These are all things that we should have in our mind if what we want is a higher quality situation. If we want a higher quality love life, these are the things to be thinking about. There's no hard and fast rules. It is very individual. Um, and there's no one way to do anything, right? But what what's really important is the willingness to have the conversations, to get into awareness, not take ourselves too seriously, and just be willing to take ourselves on that journey so that you know there's space for what's possible, right? I think it's, it's, it's also having that, I think life's tough, yes. you know, and I think you're holding on and clutching to a lot of straws or spinning a lot of plates or whatever, but it's having that, I don't know, in a strength to let go and say, you know what, it's, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And that's yeah. okay. And I think a lot of the time, also I'm seeing her as a, a single guy, but as a gay single guy, so it's, it's also very diff well, it's different. It's, it's still the same. But I think it is. It's having that, being able to just go, what's meant to be is meant to be. Yeah. You know, and having faith. Yeah, I agree. And whatever level that comes at you at, just being like, okay, let's just see what happens. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I hear that. I hear that, Scott. And I actually think that that is um, what you're talking about is a stage of dating and a stage of life that is very that can be very apropos to sort of getting in a space of freedom and release. And I think that there is a balance to be had with that and also knowing what you can create, right? And knowing what you can manifest. So you're right. There's this universal thing where what is meant to be is meant to be, and and you know will will manifest itself. And then there's that part that we can envision and create for ourselves. So no matter what we're exactly Absolutely. and finding that balance. I love it. Yay for studio audience. <laughs> All right, we have like how? Oh, we only have like so few few minutes, and I do want to get the three ways to make your love life sweeter. But the studio audience, you can come back and please save your questions. <laughs> I promise me. So I want to get these three ways to um, make your love life a little sweeter. In if we have time after that, V, I promise you can answer your okay. question. The first one um, for this week of the three ways to make your love and life sweeter is to ask yourself a few of the questions above, if not all of them. And if you want a copy of the questions, all you have to do is email me at askforcandypodcast at gmail.com and I will send you the whole list of questions. Number two, get this week, get right with someone that you may have wronged or someone who you feel has wronged you. You don't have to resume the relationship, just clean up your side of the street. That's just one way to just release some of the pressure, release the pressure valve, um, you know, just have a little bit of a nicer week. Just something to just ease. We, are, we have enough on our shoulders without walking around with the burden of unresolved stuff. And number three, figure out something that you want to change and decide what you want to change it into, whether it be your health, your workspace, your garage, a club you belong, whatever, a group, uh, something at work. Like figure out something that you just want to transform or that you want to change and then just envision what you want it to be, what the end goal is. Just a little something to start you on a journey. So that's the three ways to make love and life a little bit sweeter. V, we have time for a question. Well, about, I'm going to ask you real quick. It's ask for candy with a Y or not? Ask for candy with a Y. I'm just going to post that on your... Thank you. Ask for candy podcast at gmail.com. Thank you, V. Just posted that on Facebook Live. Those of you who are listening on the TuneIn app, or listening in the garden, you can definitely email me there too. Also, you should come on Facebook at some point so that if you can continue to listen on your TuneIn app, but if you ever wanna be part of the live celebration, the live party, which was very quiet, all these like quiet, and there's a lot of guys in tonight, which I'm very excited about that. We're busy writing all that. Right, they better be writing down those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you ever want to join the party, just come on Facebook and um, this is a public post from my page, Candace Harper, um, or you could join uh, the Creative Love Collective, which is my group here on Facebook and um, you know, engage that way. And I always repost these videos. I actually also just started a YouTube page, which is Ask for Candy. So you're welcome to go to Ask for Candy YouTube page and watch all the videos there. You'll be able to catch up with all the episodes. And I think we're going to do our sign-off question. Unless, studio audience, you have anything else you want to 
I, I yeah. just had one. Okay. Had one. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, V. V has one more question from the studio one. audience. <laughs> so how long do you think it would take, like, or how many dates or how much time do you think it would take to figure out whether you have someone of quality or not? Oh, that's a great question. That is a great question. So I think that that speaks back to, you know, are there hard and fast rules? You know, are there like tips and tricks for like how you know? I think how many dates and how long it takes is definitely um, something that we think about and we, we are concerned with. And it's one of those things that we should have no concern for whatsoever. What I think it is, is that it's a relationship is built by moments. And it's like, it's like when you see, I always liken it to when you see those people who, um, like on the news, they've been married for 80 years and they always ask them, well, what was it? What did, how did you do it? What did you do? Like, you know, they like, well, you know, we, we just loved each other. Like they don't know how they did it. it what, what happens is you live it moment to moment and you enjoy each moment and you wake up. Oh, we only got 40 seconds and you build moment by moment and that's it. Just build moment by moment. Don't worry about how many dates it will take. Don't worry about, uh, what the next move is. And that's a great question to add on for next week, for our next week's topic. Thank you, V. Also a question for this week, what am I committed to creating in my life? And until next time, never forget that you are a love machine. If you ever start to feel like you're not getting the love you need, just make more. I love you so much. Thank you. So much. It's so much fun. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody on TuneIn and the garden. Take care. Be good. Love you. Bye, everybody on Facebook Live. Oh, bye, Facebook Live. Love you. Oh, I see Catherine. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> bye, you guys. I call my sugar cane.